I'm going to speak of U.S. nuclear weapons in Europe, as Fish said, because everything starts from here, from New Mexico. And this is uh, the, the topics we are going to see together this morning, and we're going to speak about the origins, figures, modernization program of U.S. government, the non-proliferation treaty, and some works that are ongoing at some facilities where these weapons are stored. So, um, Europe hosts some 180 US uh, B-61 gravity bombs, and why does everything start here? Because these weapons are uh, designed, tested, and partially built here in New Mexico. Um, the United States planned a one trillion dollars program to modernize all the arsenal, including these weapons. And so, the new B-6112, that would be strategic weapons, would be the first strategic weapon to get to Europe. And they would be developed here in New Mexico. Um, moreover, now, UNM is bidding to manage Sandia Labs together with other entities, as you can see. And so we are wondering what could be the future of the state and of the university engaging in this kind of, you know, planning. The origins of the program lies in the natural nuclear sharing program with some agreements that were concluded between 1952 and 1968. Of those agreements, five are still into force today. And at the beginning, we said, and today, we just have B-61 weapons that are just tactical weapons, no strategic weapons. But the future of B-6112 will be strategic weapons. And they will be the first US strategic weapons on the, in the Europe. Um, these weapons are under U.S. control, so the authority to use them still rests in the President of the United States. Though some, uh, the, the Austin country has still got some responsibility. For example, they have the responsibility to deliver them in case of use. The purpose was to guarantee the U.S. umbrella of Europe and in the 70s, it counted around more than 7,000 weapons. These are the features of the presence of US nuclear weapons in Europe today. As you can see, they're stored in five countries, and the only country that has got two air bases that host them is Italy. Um, just one thing that the first four countries you see have got a sharing agreement with the United States. That means that they will use their own aircraft to deliver U.S. nuclear weapons. The only country that can't do that is Turkey, because Turkey hosts U.S. nuclear weapons but can't deliver them. So they have to wait for U.S. aircraft to go there to deliver U.S. weapons. So they just host. It's also a matter of money because as you can see the expenditures in times to maintain these storage sites are pretty high. And no, despite these, spend these expenditures, uh, safety requirements are still not met in many of these facilities. And these, we, we could understand this by, to, by some congressional sources that were questioned by Greg Mello. Now I would let you see, do we have internet connection? No. No, okay, so I can let you see the video. It showed the new B-6112 weapons and it showed what they can do. Uh, in few words, these new weapons have got a new tail kit that allows them to be guided. And they can, they have also earth penetrating capabilities and they're far more accurate than the preceding ones. B-61 that we now have in Europe. Um, the new B-6112 at about a 30 meter accuracy, while 
their predecessor had an accuracy of 115 meters. I'm sorry, but I, I don't remember the in miles. It's just in meters. However, it's like three times, up to five times more accurate. Um, the modernization program was first decided in 2010, US nuclear doctrine, and these features that I told you now allow these weapons to be more precise and usable, and this led James Miller to define them more ethical. <laughs> this is the display of the prototype of the 6112 at the US Senate. Let's point out our representatives there. Yes. Oh, if you want to do that, Carol, yeah. since Valentina does, do, does not know them. Anyone vote for her? Michelle, Michelle Lujan, Grisha. Okay. Ben Ray Lujan. Their biggest, biggest promoters of nuclear warfare. And the woman standing right over the B-6112 with the blonde hair on the right is Jill Ruby who is the director of Sandia Labs. The modernization program will also uh, emphasize an aircraft replacement with new F-35A. Uh, all these works are going to be very expensive. According to Alex Christensen, we can see that the modernization of B-61 bombs will cost around $10 billion. Uh, the $1 billion will be used to make the new guided B-6112 compatible with four existing aircraft. And U.S. will spend $350 million to make the new F-35 stealth bomber compatible with those weapons and another one million to sustain the deployment in Europe. Then we'll have other 12.5 billion for sustaining, securing, and modernizing U.S. nuclear bombs in Europe. Though, uh, in 1970, the Non-Proliferation Treaty entered into force. This treaty uh, has been signed later than the NATO agreements we spoke about, but by <coughs> signing them, the state parties agree to uh, observe its legally binding me measure. They commit to, to respect them. And it divides states into nuclear weapon states that are legally acknowledged the possession of nuclear weapons pending disarmament and non-nuclear weapon states. And it imposes some obligations on both of them. For example, the first article of the treaty states that, nu that nuclear weapon states can't transfer nuclear weapons to non-nuclear weapon states and U.S. is not respecting this. Uh, the second article says that non-nuclear weapon states should, should not accept the transfer of nuclear weapons and this article is infringed by Austin countries, by five European Austin countries. And all these countries pledge to, to respect and to commit to the obligation on the some, some people here in the U.S., but all over the world, say that nuclear weapons guarantee security. But some evidence shows that at least in Italy or uh, in European countries that host these weapons, the safety of the weapons is not that much. And so uh, not even the security of the countries because the storage places are under unsafe condition and they have been in these conditions for more than two decades now. So they need some work to be done and actually there are some ongoing works. Uh, for example, at the Insulik base in Turkey, that is probably the most concerning site both for the US and the whole world because uh, it's just 68 miles from Syrian border and is in a state that is currently involved in a kind of civil war. Uh, this is the only air base in Europe without nuclear capable aircraft, as I told you, and uh, the work that are ongoing could be 
um, are, are needed to guarantee the safety of the bombs stored there and they will cost more or less 26 million euros. The Italian air bases are located in the north of Italy, pretty near to important Italian cities. This is a small overview of the history of the development of US nuclear weapons in Italy. And as you can see, we have seen several kinds of weapons starting from 1956. Italy is the only country that hosts US nuclear weapons in two facilities and we have the greatest number of them. And it's, we, we also around the 39% of total US nuclear weapons in Europe. How do we know that these facilities host nuclear weapons? The Italian government keep on denying this, but we know that because in Gedi at least, there is the presence of this munitions support squadron and the definition of this team is a team that is responsible for receipt, storage, maintenance and control of US nuclear weapons. So if there is one of these squadron, there are nuclear weapons. And also in Italy, we have some ongoing works to increase physical protection. That means uh, get these spaces more safe against Smuggles, smuggling, or um, whatever, people to get there for intrusions, something like that. This is a picture of the Aviano Air Base, and this one of Getty Victoria Air Base. Last year, uh, some Italian politician discovered that in 2014, the Italian Ministry of Defense signed an agreement to uh, modernize the weapon storage and security system, which are the places where nuclear weapons are stored. And only the draft costed 215,000 euros. And to uh, the estimated expense to complete the project is 15 million euros. Um, local politicians and persons are concerned of the president, by the president, the presence of US nuclear weapons in the area. And so there were two motions to ask the minister about this, this matter, but the minister has never answered. <coughs> and there, there are still persons coming from the US because last March, 300 new US personnel came to the Base. Speaking about the physical protection, we had some real problem with that because last July, two alleged terrorists tried to break into the uh, Getty Air Base. They were uh, arrested and sentenced to six years in jail and then uh, exp expulsion from Italy. But this means that we actually have a problem with this place. Uh, as I told you, Italy denies hosting US nuclear weapons. Um, with uh, very smart definitions, these states uh, has been defined, have been defined with states. And Italy is one of them because they completely align to NATO position. They say that uh, they want disarmament, but until that time, we will rely on nuclear weapons to guarantee our security. And so Italy is one of those states that um, is in that ambiguous position. We didn't sign the humanitarian pledge and we don't acknowledge the existence of the legal gap. The legal gap is a doctrine that states that US, that nuclear weapons <coughs> are the only weapons of mass destruction that are not legally prohibited. Because we have an international treaty that prohibits chemical, radiological and biological weapons. The only missing is nuclear weapons. What is the NW in that? Side? NW is nuclear weapons. Oh. Yes. And so, why does Italy behave like that? Probably because nuclear weapons can be used as a bargaining chip uh, with US. Because we would probably use them to, as a guarantee to have an answer to our future demands to the US. 
And we also fear to lose the NATO umbrella and the US friendship. And that now, at the moment, since we are a quite weak power in the international landscape, we need that very much. Uh, I tried to make a small research about the public opinion on this issue, and in Italy, people just don't know anything about nuclear weapons. They don't even know that they're present on our territory. The only exception are, uh, is the population that lives near the bases. And as I told you before, there were these motions. One of these was motion 174 that uh, was called the motion to investigate risks connected to the presence of nuclear warheads on the territory. And it's still an answer. We, we really don't know if anybody will be saying anything about this. In Belgium, there is a strong fear of nuclear terrorism. As you know, Belgium has got some, um, some let's say, problems with uh, its nuclear centrals uh, that use uh, nuclear energy for civilian purpose, but they always uh, have this terrorism problem inside their country, and it could involve not only the civilian use of nuclear weapons, of nuclear energy, but also nuclear weapons. In Turkey, I personally met ICAN Turkey, that is an organization for uh, a campaign on the abolition of nuclear weapons that works in the country, and they say that people are more focused on the problems that they feel uh, more, like refugee crisis, uh, the war that is also in Syria, but especially in their own country. In Germany, in 2010, the Bundestag urged the government to work vigorously within the alliance and with our US allies for the withdrawal of US nuclear weapons from Germany. But anything changed from that moment, and an IPPNW poll shows that the 93% of the population want nuclear weapons to be banned. In Netherlands also, uh, there was a citizen proposal to ban nuclear weapons and it was adopted by the majority of the member of the parliament and though the government refuses to accept that and so these members of the parliament are issuing several motions to pressure the government to accept the will of the population. Thank you everybody. Thank you.